In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to use the calculator tool in Blue Canoe to add three meters to the levy height. Um, so maybe this is a study where we're just trying to see what levy height is necessary to make sure that we don't have flooding in a certain area. Uh, of course, the levy is here, uh, this green line. In the last tutorial, we drew a line here so that we could get a cross section of the bathymetry over the levy. Uh, in this tutorial, we're going to be using that cross section to see uh, the changes that we apply to the levy elevation uh, appear in the one-dimensional view. So what we want to do is just click, uh, just right or left click on levy underscore XYZ, go to file, go save copy as, and then just save this as plus three meters. Uh, because this process actually is destructive to the file, so we just want to work on a completely different file just to make sure we don't overwrite our original data. Uh, and then if we go into, the, we just brought that in, if we go into levy underscore XYZ underscore plus three meters, just go into the show attribute table. You can see all of the X and Y coordinates and then their associated elevation. So just, just have a look at these first few items here. We have 24.47. What we want to do is quickly add three meters to all of these, uh, just so that we basically raise the levy height by three meters everywhere along its length. Uh, so to do that quickly, we can use the, we'll just use the um, calculator tool. So if we go to tools, go to calculator, uh, while we have the levy underscore XYZ selected, go to calculator, and then just add three to it. Um, so by doing this, the three meters have been added, but when we look at the attribute table, we don't see the changes reflected there, uh, which is, I'm not sure if it's a bug within the program or if it has been intentional, but if we just save this and then remove it and then bring it back in and then go to the show attribute table, we can see that those three meters have been added to it. So that's just a little trick just to kind of help you uh, understand that those three meters have been added. And then what we want to do is uh, we want to basically take this new data, this new elevation data, and bring it onto the mesh. So instead of having levy underscore XYZ here, what we want to do is use the levy underscore XYZ underscore plus three meters. But before we do that, I just want to just do some housekeeping here just to make sure that we're not, uh, we, we know which mesh we're using. So I'm just going to make a new mesh. Uh, this will have the original levy data associated with it, and it's the original bathymetry everywhere. And then we'll just name that, we'll just name this accordingly just to make sure that we know what we're working with. So we'll just go to properties of the new mesh that's been created, go to metadata, and then just type in a mesh original and click apply OK and then we'll make another mesh go to properties run so it's the exact same mesh but we're just going to give it a different name just so we know which mesh we're actually working with and when that finishes up we'll go into the properties again of this new mesh and just name it mesh uh, levy plus three and then go apply okay uh, so this mesh it doesn't have any data associated with it. like if we drop it into the two-dimensional view you'll see it's still blue uh, so remember what we did in the previous tutorial we went here we just select new mesh go to tools go to map object and then use the 2d interpolator again and interpolate this and we can give this a name we'll call it elevation and just go okay it takes a few seconds and now if we bring that into the 2d view we can see that it's been properly interpolated which is good i'll just remove that and then the only difference that we're going to do with this one we're going to do the exact same process we're going to interpolate the uh the data that's within the new interpolator but we're going to remove levy underscore XYZ and then we're going to replace it with levy underscore XYZ underscore plus three and then go back, select the mesh, uh, this new mesh levy plus three, go to tools, go to map object, and then go and get the new interpolator 2D, which now contains that the new adjusted levy height. 
click OK, and then call this elevation as well, and go OK. That takes a few seconds, and then we can bring this into the 2D view, and you can see that it's been interpolated. But we don't necessarily see the changes reflected in the Libby. Like you can see here, this color's changed to yellow a little bit, which is, which is new. <clears throat> but to really get a good idea of how it's been changed, we'll just create a new 1D view. Okay, and then the cross section that we made in the last tutorial, uh, we'll just select that, go to Tools, go to Map Object, and then go down and find the original mesh first. We'll just get that, and we'll call this uh, Mesh Original X Section. That sounds like a good name. We'll just use that. And then go back here again, go Tools, Map Object, and then instead we're going to go get the new data from Mesh underscore Levy underscore plus 3 and bring that in instead and then you can see here it says plus three so that's good we can just differentiate the two easily and then we'll just drag and drop those onto the one dimensional view and you can see that the three meters have been added to the levy height so um, if I make this one invisible for the moment you can see that's the original bathymetry and then this is the bathymetry with three extra meters on the on the levy. So that's a tool that you can use. Uh, you can make multiple meshes and you can you, you can do different levy heights and then have these different meshes go into simulations and you can model uh, different levy heights quite easily like this. So that's everything that I wanted to talk about in this tutorial. Uh, in the next tutorial we're going to be getting into specifying the boundary conditions which is one of the last steps before we actually export everything into Telemac and we're able to do a hydrodynamic simulation. So hope to see you in the next tutorial.